Today's video is more on rivers and today we're looking at channel shape, so that's both depth and width. We're looking at the valley profile, so that's long and cross profiles, and how gradient velocity, sediment size, discharge and shape change along a river. So first of all, let's understand the terms long and cross profile of a river. So the long profile of a river is if you were to take a river from its source to its mouth, and effectively you were to look at how that river changes from the source to its mouth in terms of the things we've just discussed, so shape, river speed, sediment size, discharge, etc. We'd be looking at how those things change from the source to the river mouth. Whereas the cross profile of a river is if you were to basically cut slices into that river, so you'd end up with just a cross section. So that could be near the source, it could be near the mouth, it could be anywhere in between. So we'd be looking at things like the width of the river, the depth of the river, and at a particular point, what that sediment size, discharge and river speed is doing. So going into more detail, let's look at the upper course of the river. So near the source, what would we expect to see? Well, we'd expect to see that the river is deep with steep sided V-shaped valleys, You'd expect to see waterfalls, gorges and interlocking spurs. If you've been near the top of a mountain, you'll notice that there's the presence of very large boulders, very little sediments. So that means that, that river will be nice and clear. And why is there very little sediment? Well, there hasn't really been enough time for erosion to take place. We looked at that in a previous video, all the ways in which that river bank and bed is eroded away, producing those small pieces of sediment, which basically makes the river less clear. Vertical erosion will be largely dominant here, and that, remember, is the deepening of the river. In terms of human use, you might find hydroelectric power, so dams are built with a reservoir behind, which it provides a source of energy from those turbines linking to the generator, generating electricity. There's often hill sheep farming, forestry, and it's often a good source of tourism, and that's because the upper course is often found in mountainous areas, and mountains make great places for ski slopes and other alpine sports. As we enter the middle course of the river, we'll find that the gradient is shallower, so those slopes will be less steep, and the river is wider. We'll have increased river velocity, partly due to increased water within that river. The sediment shape will be rounded, smaller and smoother, and because some erosion has taken place, you'll find that there's sediment added to the water, so it'll be less clear. Lateral erosion is the dominant type of erosion found in the middle course of the river, and that will lead to things like meanders, oxbow lakes, in terms of land use, you'll often find settlements, farming and industry in the middle course of the river. What about the lower course of the river? So as we approach the sea, the mouth of the river, again, you'll find that the river gets wider. That slope will become gentler still. You'll have increased river velocity due to increased water volume, and that could be due to tributaries adding extra water to the river. You'll have the smallest sediment found in this portion of the river, and that's known as alluvium. That often enters suspension, meaning that the river will be even less clear than it was before. So in terms of how that river's clarity and transparency changes, it will be the most clear at the upper course. And then as you go to the middle and lower course, it will become less clear. Again, we'll see lots of lateral erosion evident, which will lead to the formation of oxbow lakes, meanders and floodplains again. So do be prepared to list these characteristics in the various parts of the river. In terms of land use, you'll definitely see lots of settlements, industry and farming in the lower course of the river. If we now summarise the long profile in both the upper and lower course of the river, at the upper course, you'll find that the long profile is steep and the river is narrow, whereas in the lower course of the river, the long profile is shallow and the river is wide and deep. Now, remember with this topic, they could give you an ordnance survey map with a particular river and ask you to identify various characteristics in the upper, lower and middle course of the river. So these are the sorts of things you want to be looking at. Remember, if the contour lines are close together, that would indicate very steep valley sides. So you'd often find that in the upper course of a river. Make sure you can identify interlocking spurs as well as floodplains. When you see that snaking of the river, remember those would indicate meanders and you might even notice an oxbow lake. In terms of land use, be prepared to identify towns, which would indicate human settlement. Any industry taking place, remember that will be more common on the middle and lower course of a river.